and ponder, I would like to just make some points before I go deeper. I'd like to acknowledge his precious wife and the family. Professor Ankwanda is my dearest friend and I've known him for over 40 years. We share a lot in common. We've had some of the deepest conversations and I've actually come to respect and trust his work. Even though his transition is still alive because his works still live. The theme of this memorial lecture is Preserving our legacy, the rich history of Ghana. I'd like to make some points here before I address the subject. I have with me a list of six, six important names that we're all familiar with. For many years, Ghana has called them the big six. That is Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Edward Akufu Addo, J.B. Dankwa, Ebenezer Akuaje, William Ufuriata, and Ubechebi Lamte. These names are very relevant and quite important for this country and to this country. But I can tell you honestly that very few people know this name with the exception of one or two names. Or very few people mention this name. Why? Because we so often forget history and its place in our society. We are talking about the life of a very great man who has contributed to this country in a very powerful way, and that is Professor James Robert Kwisi Akwanda. He gave the best of him to our world, and I believe in his passing, as we put it, he died empty. He gave the best he could give to the world. For many years, I engaged in conversations and we talk about the direction of our society, not just Ghana, but Africa as a whole, and what we can do to restore the dignity of the African people. We share common faith, and also we share common interest in terms of our aspiration for the future of Ghana. What we can do to revive the history of Ghana in a way that we would also contribute to the world at large. Of course, it was a shock to all of us and also a pain to some of us. Because the question we, I kept asking myself was, did he give his very best? Which I can conclude he did. He was actually writing a book of the set people. I mean, for many years, we'll sit and talk and discuss some of his ecological findings, we discuss history, and also the value of anthropology, and how we can get our nation to be so interested and prepare generations yet to come to appreciate the importance of our rich culture, history, traditions, and values. I would like to say that if we're talking about legacy, often in our country, legacy doesn't mean much to us. We celebrate heroes while they are alive, but we do not celebrate or appreciate legacies. And I'd like to actually take a moment and explain my understanding of the word legacy. The word legacy is a gift of property. A gift of property. It also means a special personal gift such as wealth. It also means will. Something that is so special that you can regret or give to someone or pass on to others. 
Legacy is also anything that can pass down from ancestor. Or a past which can be passed on. The word legacy has in it legend. And I believe we often forget our legacies. We often forget our legends. And so often we have great men who have contributed to our society, our world, who transition and we just forget them as if they've never lived. I mentioned the big six to start with. And I said, some of us remember some of these names, one or two, but how did we speak about these people or create special monuments to acknowledge them and remind generations to come of our important history? If you don't know your history, then you have no culture, you have no tradition, and you have no value. History is quite important, whether it's written or oral, because history has value. We all know the power of history. History has the ability of awakening, awakening something within us, within a human spirit. Even though history brings the past to the present, it can stir you up to do things that you never thought was possible. History, history is quite powerful. And to those who know it, and to those who appreciate it, and to those who use it, they retain a storyline which affects generations. I would like to remind us that as beautiful as Ghana is, as peaceful as Ghana is, and as great men and women as Ghana has provided or produced to the world, we often forget what we have. And we celebrate all our histories and all our cultures and all our values more than our own. When I was growing up as a young man here in Ghana, there were things that I learned. There were things that I heard. And I remember every evening, parents would gather children around after meals and would tell stories. And we call it the Anansi stories. Some of these stories are so vivid that a young mind finds it difficult to sleep after hearing something of Anansi's behavior. But yet, it kept us to say that we own this history. This is part of our culture. This is part of our tradition, and this is part of our values. I remember going to school, you learn your language. You learn the language of your home, language of your community, and the language of your state. But over time, as I travel back and forth, I realize that that culture has changed. That value has changed. That history is gone. And that tradition no longer exists. As one who believes in African history, and as one who believes in African culture, and as one who believes we have something to contribute to the world, I find it very strange that we live in the same house with our own family members and we forget to tell them our history, where we come from. We forget to even remind ourselves of our culture. I've lived many years abroad since the 70s. And I still live back and forth. But whenever I come home, I come to that rich culture that defines my values, my principles, and also that gives me essence. But when I see the young ones, I always wonder what their future will look like because our history is forgotten. We do, if you listen to the news often. We do what we call code switching. People speak in their native languages, but the moment they go behind the desk and the camera comes on, 
they change the accent and they begin to speak like British. <laughs> because they are not too comfortable with their own history. Somebody has taken their values, their culture, their traditions, reduced it to nothing, and given us something in its, in its place. Verse by self. The reason why I loved and I still love the name Professor James Robert Kwesi Akwanda is because of his ability to make simple the legacy our forefathers extended to us or the values which our forefathers wanted us to have so we can preserve something that is so unique which can never be taken away from us. There's a scripture which is Proverbs 22 verse 28 which says do not remove the ancient landmarks which your forefathers have set. Do not remove the ancient landmarks which your forefathers have set. And as a theologian also and as also as a philosopher I can tell you some of the most amazing things that brings laughter to me. Wherever I go within our areas, people ask me, how can you be a Christian minister and also be a traditional ruler? And I laugh, and it's amazing how our minds have been so corrupted, changed, and affected to the point where we're running away from our own culture traditions and assemble it, or lump it, or sum it, or put it together, and call everything we do as evil. One thing I discovered was that my area, the Shah area, was quite steeped in ethnic medicines. With the same faith, the same missionaries, the same message which I still believe to this very day, did not just bless us or help us, but within that message, certain things were adopted to remove us from some of the best, most simplest things that we know to be real, but has no evil Connections. They associate our herbalists with witchcraft. They call them witch doctors. And to this very day, many of us, the educated elite, have moved away from anything that is ethnic medicine, ethnic value, properties that can save the human life. We moved away from them, and now chemicals is what we know best. And the very people who told us these are not good have come around behind us to cultivate the very things we've left and create a major industry with it because we do not appreciate what we have. And the very things that we did not consider to be important today has become that important to them. The very things we, were, we used to eat, they tell us it's poisonous. We should avoid them. Today, that's what they say we should all eat but we no longer have them. So to a point... When you have your own history, your own culture, your own tradition, and you do not value it, somebody will give you one of their own, and you take it as yours, and forget your culture, your tradition, your values, and you have no tradition to call your own. So as people come to me and ask questions, for example, and Prof, Prof is one of the most strongest Christian or religious leader you ever know. And I sat with him once, and we started talking about faith, and leadership. And also, is it correct for a Christian to be a king or traditional ruler? And in our discussion, he said to me, you know what, I've never thought of it this way. And I said, let me give you another side of it. Because I was coming from a theological perspective and also from the academic perspective. So in our conversation, I explained to him that this is one of the weakest things that we were taught. And I'm going to say this because we are Christians here. Most of us are. I ask him the question, what is the meaning of the word chief? And what is the meaning of kings? And I said, what is the meaning of stool? And what is the meaning of throne? And we had a very healthy discussion. In the end, I won him over. Because I wasn't using external information to define our own history. And I said to him, before we were colonized, 
we are kings. Because the word chief is an administrative title which has nothing to do with traditional leadership. And I spent some points to him and I said, you know, it's amazing how in, within our own faith, we've forgotten some of the traditions which has no evil att attachment. But yet our faith has made everything evil when in actual fact there's no evil to it. And we talked about libation. I said, I don't pour libation, I do, I do not believe in it. But it will affect me when people pour libation. Because libation doesn't have the power we give or the credit we give it, we give to it. Because libation, if libation can speak to our forefathers, we will never suffer as we suffer today. <laughs> if libation can raise the dead, none of the wise men who pass will still be in the grave. And I said, it's amazing when you go to the world, there are moments of silence when someone passes. But in our culture, everything we do has evil connotation. Why? And I was able to explain it from my theological perspective. So, you know, I have masters and doctors in theology. I understand the Greek and the Hebrew. So let me just tell you what this means and why I do believe that we are not becoming the salt of the earth, the light of the world, and the city set on hill. It looks like those who are supposed to give light and direction to the world are now following those who are blind. If the blind leads the blind, you fall in the ditch. But it's dangerous when the blind leaves the sighted. It means the sighted has left his brain behind. If you are a leader, you are a leader. If you're a father, you're a father. You could be father of hundred or father of one. You're still a father. And fathering has even nothing to do with bearing children of your own, but the spirit of it, the heart, and the responsibility of it. There are those who did not bring a child or could not bring children to this life, but their contribution to others is greater than biological connections. And if we talk about history, let's go back and revisit our history. And let's address this thing once and for all. Do you mean that if you become a Christian, you should run away from your own shadow and literally give up what is called simple responsibility and accountability? In fact, we got to a point where in our discussions, he said, why don't we then, and why don't you help us to start this special Ghana culture and tradition city. And in fact, we drew up with, uh, with uh, one of the um, older and respected historians in the country. Came over to my place, we sat, discussed, came up with a budget to get it done. Because the goal here was to bring our history back to life and own it ourselves. So we don't become a people who have no culture, no history, no tradition, and no value we call our own. There are great men, and as we celebrate him today, for example, we're talking about the impact it's had. Our chair just said to me that he was taught by him, and the former chair and the former head of that department and the five generations that Prof's life or contribution attached. I feel he is not just a great one or great leader, but he is a legend. And his legacy should remain. And if we as a nation, as a people, will go back and acknowledge those who have contributed, those who have changed the course of our own history, or those who have made us who we are, and begin to send their stories out, will be able to save generations yet to come and make sure that our traditions stay alive. I live partly in America. I know much about American history, and I realize that we have a better history, good history, for our people 
no better than America, but we have better history, which often we still forget because of either inferiority complex. Our survival as a society is in our shared history. Even though our history is that important, archaeology is very important, anthropology is very important, the part that he represented is the facts. Because if you are an archaeologist, you can actually validate a history or you can actually correct history. And this is what Prof. Akwanda did. And when I engage him in conversation, he will speak my language and he will use terms that are so amazing. And I always ask him questions like, how did you know all of this? How do you know all of this? Now, he spoke my language better than I did. He understood my culture better than I did. He understood my tradition better than I did. And he would give me the background history of my area, including my own family history. If you don't know your history, then you live to borrow others or grow in other people's history. But once your history and facts to prove your history is introduced to you, then you have knowledge. You have knowledge. You have knowledge. We have to preserve our legacy. We have to preserve the name. Professor Akwanda. We have to preserve his works. Not just for this season. We have to make sure that the works that he contributed to make our nation great lives on. Or live on. And I hope this will not just be for Prof. Akwanda, but we shall begin to go back and recapture our histories and appreciate the legends that we've had as a people. Celebrate them. Even though we are aware that we are going to have challenges. We are aware we have difficulties. We are aware that it, take, it will take time for this to be fully realized. At least we should start from somewhere. We should start from somewhere. We should start from somewhere. I want to see that the legacy of Prof. Akwanda live on. I want to make sure that his publications keep circulating. I want to make sure that the path that he has set for us become a path that we all follow. And I hope this will not be the end, but this will be the first of many gatherings of such. Let us do all that is possible to make this unique figure in our society and his work benefit not just here, but other nations that he has touched. When you read his books or his writings, you not only get the meat, but you feel complete. Let's do all we can. Let's do all we can to honor the legends of our country. I remember August uh, 30th to September 2nd, 20. 2004, Prof. spearheaded the Transatlantic Slave Trade Conference. He brought together incredible scholars from various parts of the world to address the roots and the effect of it. I was privileged, at the same time humbled, to participate 
in that great conference. I ask myself, since 2004, has there been any second transatlantic slave trade conference? Let's preserve this legacy. And let's make sure this legacy doesn't die. He wrote a book for the said area because I wanted the said people to be known. By the way, we say shy, 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 because this is also one corrupt side of it. We are not shy people. We are said people. We don't speak shy language. We speak said language. Just like the La people were changed to La body, they corrected it because historically, by history, others gave them that identity, but they refuted it because it's corrupted identity. We are called the Shah people, and it's good to know why they call us the Shah people. We don't speak Shah language, we are said. And it's amazing because little is known about the said because it's not been publicized, but yet, you look at the Gadangui, and even the Ga itself, I was speaking to the, the head of the department, he's telling me, God damn it, we're all one, we're all done this. And the guns, you know, there is diverge uh, uh, breakaways, and that's how it all started. But the amazing thing is, there are people who live in Oyibi and even don't know Koryabe. When you talk about shy, people just look at the heels, because that's all they see. They have no idea that we are not shy people, we are sad people. And I said to myself, you know, everywhere I go in the world, people ask me, where are you from? I said, I'm from Ghana. What group, ethnic group? I said, I am Se, I'm the Gadangwe. He said, Se, what is Se? And usually, even within this country, you say Se, people say, what is Se? You have to say, shy. If you don't own your own history, you don't have any culture, you don't have any tradition, and you have no value to give. So I tell him, I'm going to reclaim our name. Prof, with all the research you've done, the 30-year research you've done in the same area, I want you to tell me what we can do. And he said, you have incredible history. Let me tell you about your history. And this is what he did for us. The Dangwe said, Ghana, saga of a resilient African kingdom. But I kept on asking for more uh, uh, um, archaeological findings to add to the book. But he says something here. He said the people of Se in Rakeshire are among Ghana's less known and publicized ethnics. But they have a most intriguing and fascinating history as shown in James and Pandas book. This work, the product of 30 years research, documents the prehistory history and cultural history of a remarkable populace who were among Ghana's early promoters of international commerce with European nations in the period of 1600 to 1980. They pioneered traditional medical science. They pioneered the traditional medical science and my, my own linguist, his father was one of the foremost. He died 100 and plus years. And he knows him well. So when we sit, we get to sit, and they get to talk, he would tell him things that his father had told him. The pioneer traditional medical science, elegant ceramic beads, and brass technology, and above all, were among the avant goddess who laid the solid foundation of Ghana cocoa industry and trade in the early 20s. Ghanaians don't know this. Ghanaians don't know this. But he did 30 years of research in my area. A lot of excavations, and I've seen most of them. And I sit back and I say, you know what? If this thing about our people is not told, then our history will for, forever, forgot, uh, forever gone. If we don't do the same and acknowledge the figures, the critical mass that we've had of those who have contributed to make our nation great, then we shall borrow foreign cultures, traditions, values, 
and history as our own. I urge all of us to take it serious. Let's keep our history. Let's acknowledge our history. Let's honor our history. Let's promote our history. And let's do all we can to make sure that our legends don't die. Let's preserve our legacy. I'll do anything I can to support the Akwanga Foundation because I believe in it. His work will still live. His contribution has to be felt by generations to come so our children will hear the story. I thank his family for their sacrifices and I'm grateful that he's contributed not just to Ghana but to many parts of Africa. The foremost archaeologist, historian and anthropologist deserve a good memory. Let's continue where he left off. Thank you.